Well, what is this thing at the Hollywood Theater, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> it's sprawling. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's um, it's a cosmic and earthly history of recorded music from the beginning of the first star being born is when it starts and it ends in the early 1990s. When you say first star being born, what do you mean? Well, there's recordings of sorts of the first stars being born and dying, so I start off with that kind of thing and then move through some more cosmic phenomena uh -huh. and the ways we record them. And then we move on to sort of recording in nature, like nature recording itself. So you mean stars in the sky? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And not like no. Beyonce. No, no, no okay. I don't want to. I don't want to show films of Beyonce. I understand. Yeah, <laughs> that would right. be a little strange. It would be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. The the cosmic stars. The, yes. the big boys. Yeah. <laughs> and and it, uh, go ahead. And it, it continues. It continues on through uh, a lot of uh, um, just sort of different types of recording that have gone on before what people think of normal recording until we get up to the 1850s and then we get a little more conventional. Yeah talk about, you know, the things people think about when they think about a recording history, so Thomas Edison and yeah. all these kind of things. And then we move all the way through to the 90s, and once we hit the 60s and up, it starts to get a little paranoid and uh, talk about sort of, becomes more about the politics than about the uh, technology. Well, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, and in the 50s, it became about the mob. Yes. I try not to touch on that too much, but uh, <laughs> it's mentioned. Well, I think Nick Koch has covered that pretty yeah, well. Yeah, there's some yes. good books about that. Uh, Do you ever read Stift? You know yes. this book? Yeah, my own man. Boy, yeah. chilling. <laughs> yeah. Yes, really. Yeah. Um, and you're going to be the interlocutor. Yes, that's a good word for it, interlocutor. <laughs> so basically, all I'll be doing, um, it's mostly, you know, there's slides going through the whole thing, and there's... Um, uh, audio samples of things, and then a lot of film. Um, the bulk of the film is stuff from the late 50s and early 60s, and, but there's also other little pieces of film here and there. Uh -huh. So I'm basically just uh, kind of guiding it through, trying not to yab too much. Well, so what's the genesis of this? How was this born? Uh, this was born out of desperation because <laughs> I was offered a tour of Europe to do something. And this was something that's always been in the back of my head as something I've been studying. And I thought it'd be interesting to try to cover this entire history in an hour and a half and see how that goes, with half of it being film and mm -hmm. half of it being other mediums. And so, uh, yeah, I just had to come up with something. And this just started to come together, and I did my best. It started as a, um, a four-hour kind of magnum opus of, wow. that I would never subject anyone to. Was just, <laughs> that's totally out of re unreasonable. But um, I managed to skim it down to a nice, tight hour and a half. Uh -huh. <laughs> Are you going to do it again anywhere else? No, this is, this is it. This is the one. Um, wow. I've done it already a bunch. I went on yeah. tour in Europe and did yeah. it for a couple months, and yeah. I think I'm going to kill it with this one. And, and never, I, I'm actually pretty sick of the material, to be honest. But um, And this one will be, I had to alter it a lot just so I didn't go insane from repeating myself. Like, I hate repeating stories. So, yeah. Yeah. so uh, but yeah, this will be it. Final performance. Well, is it, is it, is it, is this, so it can't be preserved? It can't be preserved. Nobody will film it. I won't let anyone film it. Um, there'll be no, no evidence of this after it's performed once. That's the idea. Well, there's, that's postmodern for you. Is it? I don't know. No, I think it's fashion, if anything. <laughs> yeah, I like, um, I like the idea of things not being preserved all the time, and being in the moment, live performance and all uh -huh. that. You know, I, mean, uh -huh. I like this idea. And also, it's a confidence thing. I don't really want evidence. And beyond that, it's designed to be a live experience. It's not, you know, if I was to do it as a film or as an audio presentation, I would, I would put it together much more um, for that. But this is designed specifically for, for the stage. So. So you, do you do you like not consider yourself a performer? Oh God, no! Yeah, no, <laughs> far from it. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Yeah, um, yeah I, I try to stay out of the way of the material. So I'm more of a presenter of really good. I, I think my one strength as a performer or as a uh, presenter is that I stay out of the way of the more interesting stuff. You don't have to, you know. I I, I have a pretty good taste and I can push that stuff to the forefront and you know here's here's good films here's good images here's good information but it's not about me and my persona because I'm a pretty dull persona all one of the few one of the few people on earth that it's not about you <laughs> yeah well I think uh, there's a few folks who like to like to linger in the background yeah, yeah. well it's kind of like your store yeah yeah it's a background kind of store we don't yeah. 
we're uh, hidden away. We're, we're a tiny store and we're hidden away, but we have good taste and you know we're doing our thing quietly. And without a, without a footprint on the web? Yeah, we're not on the internet at all. Uh, we don't have a, a cash register or credit card reader. Um, we just operate with a calculator and a notebook wow. as, a, as an inventory system. We just use a notebook. And that's so you have to have cash to come in here? Yeah, you gotta have cash. Yeah, or go down the street and get some at the ATM. So it's sort of a yeah, we're floating in a weird world, <laughs> but we're making it barely. But we're making it. Yeah. Um, any any albums coming out on your label any, anytime soon? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff these days. Um, we're gonna be doing more stuff with the Alan Lomax archive. A lot of uh, his field recordings from the late '70s and early '80s. We're gonna start putting that stuff out. Um, tons of compilations of blues and gospel stuff. Ethiopian music. Um, Spending a lot of time on Ethiopian releases right now. Mm -hmm. um, local stuff too by people like Dead Moon and uh, Michael Hurley and yeah. people like that. So, um, yeah, we have a fair amount coming around. So, do you have to come here to get them? No, no, they're distributed to other stores. Okay. Even in Portland, you can get them at every store in Portland. And, and you know, around the world, they're actually distributed. Yeah, so, I, we're not I, that old fashioned. I know. I, I, I did find something <laughs> online that had oh, your albums. Yes. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, they exist. Yes. <laughs> Outside of here. Well, that's great. That's uh, congratulations oh, uh, on remaining um, true to yourself. Thanks. Because there's very, there's very few people who do that. I don't know. It's I so think... easy to sell out. Well, we all we all choose our battles, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure there's somewhere where I'm leaving in a footprint that's really awful. But just being an American, you're kind of <laughs> inevitably doing some awful things to this planet. But uh, but yeah, we're we're trying to uh, hold a line somewhere. <laughs> what was Lomax recording during that period? Um, well, he did a lot of, of American recordings from the South, uh -huh. um, and he was finding basically the last people of certain traditions that he could just sense they were about to die out. So uh -huh. it'd be mostly older folks. Um, there's a lot of people in these films who are, or in these recordings who are from their, um, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, and they're they're all sort of the last standard bearers of traditions that are about to go. Blues and gospel. Blues, gospel. Um, you know. I mean, even Native American music, uh, yeah. you know, and then things like uh, Cajun music uh -huh. and um, a lot of folk stuff, a lot of, go um, yeah, all kinds of things, you know, yeah. all over the board. Anything yeah. American, drum and fife music. You know, yeah. yeah, I mean, drum and fife is so obscure. I mean, I know Otho Davis, yeah. but I don't know anybody other than Otho Davis. You there's know what I'm saying? There's not much out there. Yeah, yeah there's not yeah. much more to know. I mean, there's been maybe... Uh, Jeez, I don't know, maybe five LPs of that material, and then tracks yeah. scattered over count comps over the years. I mean, yeah. it's not much considering it was a huge part of American history. Yeah. It's that yeah. Music and it's a well, great. We'll all be looking for it. You know, uh, hope. Let's 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 fill that. Let's fill the, the Hollywood Theater on, nice. on the third. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> thanks a lot. Show up. Yeah, Appreciate we'll, it. Yeah. Thanks for having me.